Hi, welcome to the OCP Virtual Summit and to this session, Facebook Data Center Networking, Deployments and Beyond. I'm Omar Baldonado, part of the Facebook Network Infrastructure Team and also co-lead of the OCP Networking Project. So I thought I'd start with a concept, disaggregation, that's very familiar to many of us in OCP Networking. And this is where we take the network hardware and decouple it from the network software on top. This allows for more openness, more collaboration, and hopefully more innovation in each of those layers. Taking a look at the hardware layer, uh, Facebook has been participating with OCP since the beginning of the OCP networking project on all these different systems, starting with our Wedge 40 contribution all the way to our most recent mini pack contribution last year. All of these uh, systems have been OCP accepted and so their designs are freely available to the whole community. And starting with our 100 gig design, Wedge 100, all of the 100 gig designs are in massive wide scale uh, use within uh, the Facebook data centers. All of these systems run from a software perspective, FBOSS, which is our network operating system. And this is something that we've also contributed to open source. Last year, we covered uh, some of the newest topologies and uh, developments within data center networking, where we talked about the mini pack, as well as the uh, Arista 7368, which we developed in collaboration with Arista. Both of those switches run FBOSS, and together they came into a new set of topologies for each data center region. Starting with our F16 uh, new building fabric uh, topology, and we have six of those in a region that are connected via the new fabric aggregation layer called HGrid. If you're interested in more details on this, I encourage you to check out the Facebook engineering blog or some of the videos from uh, the summit from last year. So next I wanna spend a bunch of time talking about uh, what does building our own enable for Facebook? This is a question I get quite often. So um, I'll cover this from the point of view of uh, deployments as well as uh, uh, a couple of other areas. Deployments is just part of an overall network life cycle that we want to streamline. And deployments is a very important part for us to, uh, to streamline because uh, of the scale that we operate, we're constantly having to uh, deploy uh, new capacity out into the infrastructure. Also having more control and owning our, our own software allows us to uh, try different ways to increase our efficiency. And then finally, as part of our software development and the way we operate our network, uh, we want to have much quicker development cycles as well as much more frequent uh, pushes out into the network fleet. So let's go into deployments first. As I mentioned, deployments is part of a whole uh, life cycle uh, of the network. And I've just taken out a few of the phases that are re related to deployment. Certainly ex the execution phase uh, is very related. It is deployment, um, but some of the other phases uh, help inform it. The planning phase, there are many time horizons you can consider for planning. But uh, in this case, this is planning of deployment. So we're looking, what do we need to build, let's say, in the next year? And planning takes into account um, a supply signal. You know, what, what are we building right now? What can we deploy out um, within this time frame? As well as a demand signal. What are we forecasting that the applications and services will need uh, within that next year or so? Execution is actually where we do the deployment itself. And I'll cover at a high level in, in upcoming slides um, the difference between a, a green field and a brown field for us because that's a really important high level distinction. Finally, the design phase of the life cycle. Um, I, will, I only highlight this because this is how we came up with, uh, with something like, let's start deploying F16 and, um, and HGrid into the regions. Uh, we were seeing back in the planning cycle that the demand signal wasn't going to be satisfied with our previous uh, topologies. Um, we couldn't build enough of those uh, quickly enough. So we needed a new design. That's how we came up with F16 and HGrid. So again, taking this, uh, looking at this example of deployment, 
let's consider a little bit more what goes into the migrations of buildings and regions. So on the left here, we have our previous topology, uh, the fabric, and then on the right is that new F16 building fabric. And if you see, there, there, are, important, there are a number of important uh, things to consider during the migration. So first of all, we have new switches uh, that we want to put into place and new optics. But if you look carefully, there's actually different tiers in the network. The fabric has, a, has this yellow layer, um, a yellow tier that doesn't exist in the new F16. Finally, this concept of drains. What do I mean by that? Um, an upgrade would go much more easily if I could turn off the whole building and just get rid of all the traffic and bring it all down, do the upgrade, and then bring it all back up. But the downside of this, while it might be easier to, to execute on, the downside would be that we would lose all that capacity. And we want to keep it as much capacity as available to our services and applications as possible. So we actually do these upgrades incrementally or, or in place. So we try to keep traffic running within the building as much as possible uh, during the upgrade. And this is a, uh, a delicate dance of drains and undrains with those applications. Stepping out a little bit more broadly, look at what it takes to upgrade a whole region. Again, here on the left is our pre -gen, or previous region design with three buildings and, uh, and, and an aggregation fabric. And on the, the right is the new the six building design, six F-16s with the new H-grid. Same considerations. There are new switches that have gone on and gone, that are going into each layer, new optics. Um, the, again, the tiering is different. Certainly the, the aggregation fabric layer has a different uh, tier design than the new H-grid. Um, and then the drain concept again is, is important. Uh, we definitely wouldn't want to drain uh, a whole region of capacity. Um, so we want to keep uh, we want to keep as much of it up as possible. And then this delicate dance again uh, extends at the building level where um, if as I'm upgrading a, a building or if I'm upgrading the actual H grid itself, I need to make sure that the buildings can all still talk to each other. So as part of the the, the workflow to achieve this, we already have, well, we have an end-to-end -end workflow orchestration system that takes a look at all the different steps to, to do a deployment. And this is actually pretty complicated because not only do we want to um, have orchestration and workflow for the automated software pieces, but there's a lot of human-centered steps that we need to take into account as well. Actually physically racking and stacking and putting in um, servers or networking equipment, uh, or hooking up thousands of, of different optics and circuits, uh, which is especially complicated when you consider the other end of those circuits may be hundreds of meters away in, in a different building. So I don't mean to, uh, to, make, uh, uh, to say that Greenfield is easy by any means. I'm just gonna focus on what the uh, incremental steps are for the Brownfield. So we have to do all that we have to do within Greenfield as well as these additional, some of these additional steps. So as I mentioned, we have to keep, we want to keep as much of the infrastructure up as possible for the traffic. So um, we, we selectively turn off certain devices and circuits, then we drain out different parts of the, uh, the traffic that's running in, uh, in, the, in the area. We have to consider what are we upgrading? Are we upgrading a fabric or are we upgrading the actual interconnect? Um, and there's so many steps actually, it just, to make the point, it's scrolling off the bottom of the, the page here. But that last one I haven't even drawn, which is connections to the backbone layer. Again, um, we want to keep that region up as much as possible, and that region connects to our backbone in order to reach the internet and the other uh, data center regions. So that backbone layer set of connectivity also has to get upgraded. If you are interested in learning more about this, the, the, there is another session that I would encourage you to check out, the Self-Building Data Center Networks uh, session with Shashank and Jason from our Facebook networking team. Uh, they and the whole team have been going through this, uh, this migration activity intensely over the last few weeks, especially with the, the surge of usage in the Facebook family of applications. 
um, and they are going to be uh, available to talk about all, all the different uh, uh, learnings that they've had in trying to accelerate these, uh, these brownfield deployments. So just to touch on a couple of other uh, areas, um, let's look at uh, increasing efficiency. So if you look at the, the topologies so far, they're, they're very symmetric and uniform by design, right? Um, lots of parallel paths, and uh, we use BGP and ECMP in the control plane to, to, um, to use all those parallel paths um, simultaneously. Now, we've seen, though, during the deployment discussion, there are, uh, there are multiple reasons why this nice symmetric topology, nice symmetric traffic distribution might not, might not actually be the case in reality, right? We, we're, we're constantly upgrading, so um, different planes may be turned off or they may be of different capacities, um, or there might just actually be actual maintenance issues going on where there's an outage in one area. Um, now, from the, that's from the topology perspective. From the traffic perspective, Ideally, we would have just uniform traffic everywhere, but the reality is um, we will see persistent uh, differences and imbalances in the traffic patterns from different applications, um, and that's just by design. So we want to be able to address that, and that's something where we've had to take this existing design and, and think differently about it. Um, the existing design, by the way, is uh, is well documented within uh, an RFC that one of our um, networking team from Facebook co-authored, uh, Peter Lopikoff. So, if we want to take if we want to take into account persistent load differences, and we want to take into account that we might have a, um, uh, a not perfectly symmetric topology to, underneath us, we need new control. We need a, cu a custom routing solution, and this is where. Um, we might want to take advantage of those non-shortest paths. We want to be more load aware. So we'll have uh, mechanisms such as MPLS or segment routing to enforce usage of those other paths. And now that we have our own hardware and software at all the tiers within, within the network, we can just start doing this um, on top of FBOSS. And we have uh, a, a, another open system called OpenR that is a routing system that we've open sourced and we're starting to, to explore how we can do this. If you want to learn more about that initiative, check out the Open Routing Data Center, Open Routing the Data Center session uh, with Saif. So finally, uh, let's look at uh, this notion of faster development and more frequent pushes. Um, this is something that um, is key to all the software and network work that we want to do. So for example, deployments, if I need some support on every switch to make the, the workflow more streamlined and it needs some, some extra functionality, I want to push that out into the whole fleet as quickly as possible. Or take the, the load awareness efficiency improving case. Um, if all of a sudden we decide we want better telemetry, better real-time telemetry coming from the switches, I'd like to push that out as quickly as possible too across the fleet. So we aim within Facebook to upgrade our whole fleet of data center switches every two weeks in, in all regions. And in order to do that, we need faster development cycles as well as the ability to have frequent and reliable pushes. So one aspect of this, there's a lot that goes into, into this, but one aspect I wanted to call out is the role of Psi. The switch abstraction interface is a project within OCP that uh, has been under development for and an active uh, work for the last few years and happy to share that FBOSS is now um, using the switch abstraction interface. We've jumped into it and uh, are currently porting FBOSS to use side. We see a lot of positives around this. The uniformity of the API lets us go faster, um, but in addition to that, it also lets us uh, be more uniform and move faster on our testing. And this is especially important because Every feature we develop, we want to have automatic uh, test cases that launch uh, every time we want to do a push out into the network. So big thanks to the OCP networking community for all of you that work on Psi. Uh, we're excited to have jumped into this uh, and to be part of that community. If you're interested in learning more about this, check out the FBOSS on Psi session with Jasmeet. 
uh, here during the summit. So I want to wrap up just with a couple of observations of where where we can see some data center networking going. Um, just to underscore, network is the distributed hardware and software system that underlies all the distributed systems on top. Um, and sometimes we think of the network as, as just this, this underlay uh, that's separate from the software on top and separate from the other hardware uh, and infrastructure. But I think that's something that will be changing over the next few years. So let's look at the software layers. Um, there's an opportunity for us to be much more application aware and integrated with the applications so that we can have application specific networking. Um, this is going to involve a lot of work to figure out you know, what are the metrics that we need to, to optimize for different applications, uh, a whole set of closed feedback loop systems that we'll, we'll have to design. Um, but that's the direction I see us going. Similarly, at the, at the bottom layers, we often think of the, the separate silos of you know, s server, storage, and network. But I think that's starting to blur now too, where we want to really co-design the network with the other hardware and some of the lower layer software. So co-package and onboard optics is part of this, but also NICs, accelerators, and, and even at the software layer, those kernel and transport um, layers. Now for both of those uh, areas, we're going to have a lot of software development, and because of that, we want to have faster development again and more frequent pushes. Uh, that's a constant, no matter what we what we do within the network. So that brings me to the close. I can say that uh, there's a lot of exciting work going on within uh, Facebook data center networking as well as networking in general. We are clearly only 1% finished in this journey. If you are interested in learning more, again, here are some of the sessions that are going on during the virtual summit. I uh, encourage you to take a look at some of those and thank you for your time.